Joshua was not the only prophet to command a planet to act in accordance with his will. Moses and Aaron commanded the planet Mars, identified as the Lord or the Angel of the Lord in the scriptural account, to send the plagues upon Egypt. It was dust from Mars that caused the waters of Egypt to turn blood red. Moses and Aaron did not give voice commands to the red planet as did Joshua. Instead, they used the rod of God to direct the planet. This was repeated at the Sea of Passage where Moses raised the rod to part the sea. This verse is more explicit, with the Lord, meaning Mars, causing the sea to divide when directed by Moses with his stretched out hand. Elijah called down fire from a planet above, likely Mars. Following the prophet's verbal command, the planet struck the earth with a gigantic lightning bolt, vaporizing the surface, wood, and altar. Deborah was the ruling judge over Israel and prophetess like unto Joshua and Moses. As such, she had the same authority to command the planets in behalf of the nation as they did. We learn from her song after the battle against Sisera that the planets called stars fought for Israel. Many scholars dismiss the explicit reference to heavenly bodies due to their incredulity. But this verse is to be taken literally. The Hebrew word translated stars is the plural form of kokob or kokabim. The feminine form can refer to a planet, specifically Venus, the female star. Now we know from the book of Abraham that this same word kokob designates a star. The Hebrew plural, kokabim, designates stars. The great lights of the firmament are not the bodies we call stars today, but planets. Kolob was one of the kokabim, the great lights or planets, shown to Abraham. Later in the account, the Lord makes explicit that Kolob is a planet. Therefore, the Kokabim that fought for Deborah and Israel were planets. One of the stars commanded by Deborah to fight against Sisera was called Meros. Apparently, it disobeyed the command and was therefore rightly cursed. Because of the reference to inhabitants, Many biblical scholars object to calling Meros a star or planet. That would mean that there is extraterrestrial human life on a nearby planet. Instead, they identified Meros as a local village or city. But Meros is mentioned only once in the Old Testament, in this verse, and it is unknown historically elsewhere. Scholars explain its absence as a city in Samaria as the effect of the curse. In other words, the city was destroyed so completely that it appears nowhere in the historical record.
More puzzling still is the fact that scholars can't even determine the derivation of May Rose. They have no idea where the word came from. Be that as it may, May Rose can only be a nearby planet. The Talmud makes this clear, stating that the context of the verse makes this reading mandatory. Louis Ginsburg's Legend of the Jews agrees. The star Mayrose is one of the fiery hosts of heaven. Besides, how can the inhabitants of an unknown village fight from heaven? If Mayrose is a planet, then the text of the Song of Deborah and Barak makes sense. The planet sent fire to Earth, referring to huge electrical discharges, incinerating Cicera's troops alive. Due to the heat, the soldiers sought refuge in the river, which swept their bodies into the sea. If May Rose is a planet, and one near enough to send fire down to Earth, then how does one explain that it has inhabitants? Of course, this is the reason many, if not most, biblical scholars maintain it was a village or city on Earth. But there are others that maintain both that Mayrose is a planet and that it is inhabited. The Kabad Lovovich group, a branch of Hasidic Jews, for example, use this verse to support the notion that God has placed life on other planets. One influential 18th century rabbi cited the Talmud to support his claim that Mayrose is an inhabited planet somewhere in outer space. Though we believe that there are inhabited planets nearby, which is a discussion for a later thread, we also believe there is a more logical solution to the so-called inhabitants of Mayrose. An initial clue is found in the Zohar, a set of commentaries on the Torah. If the sense of the verse refers to a camp, meaning a camp of warriors, then this does not necessarily refer to human beings, nor does it refer to surrounding planets, which itself does not make sense. One planet of the polar configuration was said to have a troop of mighty men following him, a camp of soldiers. The soldiers were a surrounding train of meteorites. This was the planet Mars. David Talbot explains. It seems that rocks encircling Mars, when Mars loomed huge in the heavens, appeared as a fiery retinue of warriors with a blazing countenance. The terrifying Marats of Hindu literature derive from the same Indo-European root as the Latin Mars. They are the sons and companions of the Hindu Rudra, the Red One, who could hardly be other than Mars itself. The Marats whirled in the heavens, bringing blasts of fire, of lightning, and falling stone. Babylonian astronomical traditions declare precisely the same thing of Nergal, the planet Mars. Raging demons with awesome numbers run at his right and at his left, the texts say. In the same way, the classical poet described the dwelling of the Greek Ares, the Roman Mars, ringed by a thousand furies.
just as a horde of berserkers or the furious Valkyries accompanied the divine warriors in archaic traditions of Germany and Scandinavia. These warriors were the Maruts in Vedic lore. As Max Mueller pointed out, Maruts shares the same linguistic root as Latin Mars. This may give us the clue to solving the identity of the planet Meros. The primary consonantal sequence of the Hebrew planet, Meros, is M-R-S. In principle, this is the same as the Latin Mars, whose primary consonantal sequence is the same, M-R-S. Some transliterations have Z substituted for S. This would be linguistically parallel to the TS found in Maruts. Of course, this is a folk etymology based upon sound. Still, biblical scholars do not have a certain derivation of the word themselves and guess at possible etymologies based upon similarities in sound. Given the mythological match of Meros and its camp with Mars and its trailing horde of meteoric warriors, the Maruts, it is only reasonable to also linguistically match the two. Mayraz would be Mars. <laughs>